Hello, good evening. Once again, this is Mr. Steele, and I'm here again trying to help you through some of the standard quiz questions um, on the term three and four standard quiz for Algebra 2 at Franklin. Um, and today I'm going to tackle, um, or at least this time, same day as most of the, a lot of these videos, I'm going to tackle standard number seven, which asks you to solve some polynomial equations, and it asks you to do it by factoring. Now, um, when we go through to do this, we're going to have to know the factoring strategies, so I recommend um, that if you haven't watched video number six for standard number six about factoring, I recommend that you watch that one first, only because you're not going to be able to solve these guys without factoring, and I don't want to spend forever in these videos working on the factoring part. I want to do the factoring, kind of practice through that, and then work on the solving and like the specific little twists that are involved in solving. So please do watch video for standard six if you aren't comfortable with factoring. For now, um, we're going to look at this first one. So here's our first equation, 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 27x plus 36 equals zero. We want to find out what values of x make this equal to zero. So first, one of the things we do need to know, of course, is what kinds of strategies we can use to break up this polynomial. And when we have four terms, our strategy is going to be the factoring by grouping strategy. Um, we're going to use grouping. So that means we're going to use either the box or the um, split in the middle so that we can break this up into a product of factors. Um, even before that though, um, as far as key ideas, something we need to keep in mind is the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now you might not think of it in terms of that name once you've kind of heard it a couple times, although I would recommend that you do. Um, but the fundamental theorem of algebra helps guide our solving by telling us how many solutions we're going to get for a polynomial equation. And of course this guy that we're looking at here um, in this first example is a polynomial equation and so we can actually find out the number of solutions by looking at the degree. And In fact that's what the fundamental theorem of algebra boils down to effectively for us. The degree of the polynomial equals the number of solutions. And now we could have repeated ones and everything but um, really it tells us the number of solutions we're going to get. So looking at this guy, my degree is going to be 3. It's just the highest exponent of any individual term. So degree 3 as we did back in the chapter, I think it was like six or seven test, degree equals three, which tells us we need three solutions. So we'll know we haven't gotten enough of them or gotten all of them if we have less than three solutions. I mean, your answer is wrong. It'll just be crossed out and you'll feel bad about yourself. So just keep that in mind. It's going to guide our thing. We need to go down and break this up so that we end up with three answers. So let's start with the factoring piece. So factoring by grouping, I'll use the box. Most of my class uses the box, so let's go that way. There it is. We'll have 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 27x. So, of course, all I'm doing now is just putting all the pieces in the box plus 36. And now I've got to pull out GCFs, sideways and upwards. So let's start sideways here. GCF of 27x and 36, which is going to be a positive 9. GCF of 3x cubed and 4x squared is just going to be x squared. 3 and 4 is only GCF is 1. Moving up here, our GCF is going to be 3x. I think you can see that. 3 and 27 both have a 3, and x cubed and x both have an x. Then lastly, GCF for the last term is going to be positive 4, as you can probably guess. So this guy factors into x squared plus 9 and 3x plus 4. And if this was a factoring problem, that would be an okay answer. We would accept that as a final answer for factor. The problem is we want to solve. We need three answers. We want to know what x's make this guy up here equal to zero. So in fact what we have to do is we have to say, okay, now that I know these factors, what makes these factors equal to zero? And so we'll end up with two different to get using the property of zero products or zero products property or something like that. Can't remember the name. So the first possibility in order to give us answers would be that x squared plus nine equals zero. The other would be that three x plus four equals zero. So now of these two this one's clearly the easier one. It's just a single linear equation. So let's start there get one answer out of the way. Subtract 4 from both sides. We'll get that 3x equals negative 4. And then making a quick 1, we'll get that x equals negative 4 over 3. So that is one of our answers. It's like in our mind we're going, okay, since the degree is 3, we need three answers. We've now got one of them. We've got negative 4 thirds. And so it's like, okay, I still need two more, otherwise my answer is not complete. So we go over to here. Now on this guy we have some options. We could recognize this as x squared minus a negative 9 and then break it up by factoring as a difference of squares. But I think most people don't see it that way just yet. So let's instead solve it using the square root method. We'll subtract 9 from both sides. We'll get that x squared equals negative 9. A problem or an equation we couldn't have solved back in 7th and 8th grade before we knew about imaginaries. Here though, we can take the square root on both sides. 
we'll get that x equals plus or minus the square root of, of negative 9. The well, square root of negative 9 is just negative 1 times 9, which is the same thing as plus or minus 9i squared. Well, both of these guys can be factored. In fact, 9 is just 3 times 3. So 3 times 3 times i squared, the square root of that is going to be, or will be, plus or minus 3i. And so, in fact, from this other equation, x squared plus 9, which had degree 2, so we should expect two answers by the uh, fundamental theorem of algebra, we get our second and third one. First one is 3i, second one is negative 3i. And so 1, 2, 3, we have our three answers. Assuming we haven't made any mistakes, this will be our, these will be our three solutions. So our answer to the problem, we write over on the little answer line, is x equals negative 4 thirds, our only real solution. And then we can write positive 3i, negative 3i, or, uh, well actually I like it better that way, 3i and negative 3i. So that we really show that fundamental theorem that we have one, two, three solutions. Oops. And there we go. So factoring by grouping, our problem with four terms in polynomial, when we go to solve, we factor by grouping and then of course use the normal solving skills to get our answer. So that is one possibility for this problem. Let's look at another one. Okay, so here we are, second kind of problem. This time we've got x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12 equals zero. So once again, we wanna solve and find what x values make this equation true. And when we look at it, obviously it doesn't fit the factoring by grouping strategy because there's not four terms. And in fact, in this case, um, for this particular problem, it's not always true in the real world, but for these guys, if we have three terms, and especially if we have degree four, that's gonna be the quadratic-ish method. So we're just gonna basically start by pretending it's a diamond, go through all the little um, rigmarole for that, and then at a certain point we'll go through and actually solve it just like we did the last time. So looking at this guy, we're kind of in luck because it's not a number in front. This won't be a hard um, diamond type problem when we start pretending. Instead, um, we'll end up by doing the diamond. So we'll have to figure out what two numbers multiply 12 and add up to negative seven. Now, of course, I'm kind of screwing up my own key ideas here. I did want to remember to um, note that we can figure out how many solutions we need based on the degree. So if we look up here, my degree is going to be 4. This is a degree 4 polynomial. That means that since we have degree 4, that means we need four solutions. So if we have anything less than four solutions, we're messing something up. And of course, repeats are okay, but I don't think we'll get any in this case. And so here we are. We're pretending this is a diamond. So what two numbers multiply 12, add up to negative 7? Well, this is one of my favorites, negative 3 and negative 4. So um, if you want to use the box, you can. I would encourage that. It's always a good step to use, although it does take a little bit of time. Um, you might jump to um, your factors from here. I usually would, but box is good. So we've now got x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4x squared. And again, the minus 3x squared and minus 4x squared add up to the negative 7x squared we had originally and then plus 12, <coughs> and now we can pull out our GCFs. So we'll go up first. So GCF is x squared and minus three from each one. And the GCF down here is negative four, and over here it's x squared. So our polynomial in this case factors to x squared minus four times x squared minus three. And that whole thing is equal to zero. And so from here, just like we did before, we do have two possibilities, either this one's equal to zero or this one is, but in fact, we can actually factor this further. Um, we could go pretty far. We could actually go all the way down to the answer if we really wanted to, because this guy is a difference of squares. Yep, that's an ugly D. Pen sometimes doesn't work here, difference of squares. And so a difference of squares we can break up. Square root of x squared is x, square root of four is two. So we can turn this into x plus two, x minus two, and that's just going to save us the likelihood of making a mistake um, later on. And that one's x squared minus 3. And since 3 isn't a perfect square, we don't have to break it up, although a lot of you do know how to at this point. So from here, I can see um, two of my answers right over here. Like We're going to get that x could be plus or minus 2 from here. Obviously, negative 2 makes this first factor equal to 0, and positive 2 makes that second factor equal to 0. Our question is, what about this guy? When is x squared minus 3 equal to 0? Well, if you factor it, you'll get x plus the square root of 3 and x minus the square root of 3. But if you don't see that, if you don't want to do it that way, then you can just use the square root method again. We'll start by adding the 3 to over to both side, to the other side. So staying balanced, we'll get x squared equals positive 3. And then taking the square root of both sides, we'll get that x equals the square root of 3 
but of course we took the square root so we need a plus or minus and that's one two three four answers and so in fact as we write out our answers the most um, best way to write this would be negative two and positive two negative root three and positive root three but of course most of you will probably write plus or minus two plus or minus the square root of three which are both fine and there we go so once again the solving part actually isn't too bad although it does require a little bit of tricks it's mostly just recognizing what factoring strategy to use and then executing it as we go through so once again that was the um, four solution one for ones that look like a quadratic um, so we've got one more it's by far I would say the most um, intense one to do so let's look at the one okay so here we are in our last problem like we want to hit the third type of factoring strategy that we might need to solve in standard number seven and that third strategy, um, the type is going to be mop. Like we're going to have to use mop here because we have a sum or a difference of cubes. In this case, we actually have a um, sum of cubes. So first, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. Make sure it's clear. So we want to figure out when does 125x cubed plus 27 equal zero. And this one will be intense. So first, let's start with the same analysis as before. Let's know how many solutions we need to again motivate how far we go and to kind of help us realize if we've gotten it right. Well, our degree is obviously three. Like it's x to the third power, no other. Um, powers of x. So this is degree 3, which means we need three solutions. So when we break this up, we're going to need to end up with three numbers um, in order to satisfy the fundamental theorem of algebra. So let's start by factoring it. We'll use mop. Um, first, we can kind of ask ourselves what's being cubed. I think it's probably a little easier for you at this point to see them. Um, the two things cubed here are 5x, because 5 cubed is 125, x cubed is x cubed, and um, 27 is, of course, 3 cubed. So those are our pieces. Now we need to actually plug it into the factors. So for mop, we get a short factor and a long one. That's all going to be equal to zero. So our pieces we can plug in. Remember, first part is just the originals. The second factor, the long one, has two pieces, or three different individual parts. On the outsides, we've got the squares of all the individual pieces, or of the original pieces. And in the middle, we have the product. So 5x times 3. For the signs, we use mo matching opposite positives, so we use mob. So the first one matches the original. Our original sign was a plus, as you can see right here. Our next one is opposite the original, so it would be a minus. And our third one is always positive. So um, there we go. There's our plus. I did make a mistake there. I wrote a 3 when I meant to write a 2. It's just always squared. Okay, and what that gives us is our factored version of the polynomial. 5x plus 3 times 25x squared minus 15x plus 9. Now at this point, um, when we go to solve, um, one of these guys is really quick. Like if we go to solve that guy equal to 0, using that 0 products property, um, 5x plus 3 equals 0, we subtract 3, blah, 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 get 5x equals negative 3, then we can divide both sides by 5. And we'll get that x equals negative 3 over 5. And it's like, yay, got one. Um, the problem is, like, yeah, you got the easy one. Like, the problem is going to be over here. Like, trying to figure out when is 25x squared minus 15x plus 9 equal to 0. Like, when does that happen? Well, to do this, um, when we do a mop problem, if we've done it correctly, we're always going to have to use the quadratic formula. That's just an unfortunate fact, because this guy does not um, factor. So quadratic formula it's going to be. But there is a caveat. When you're solving mop problems, the answer will include... So this is one to um, really keep in mind. The answer, it will always have a certain piece that's the same. It's always going to have some factor that includes i root 3. And in fact, even more importantly, it's going to have plus or minus something i root 3. This happens every time. There's a certain symmetry to these um, sum and difference of cube problems that cause this to happen. And if you end up taking honors pre-cal at any point, um, you'll see that when you do the trig trigonometric form of complex number and you solve things using, I um, can't think of the name of it, but there's a way to solve um, find these solutions um, for stuff other than just cubes. Um, either way, like this kind of helps guide us. We have to use quadratic formula, and we actually have to, and we should have our answer including plus or minus i root 3 if we've done it correctly. So looking at this, we need to remember the quadratic formula. So we'll use the little song. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over to a sorry my throat's a little sore right now from allergies and stuff but there's a quadratic formula so we want to plug into that so our individual pieces are 25 is a playing the role of b is negative 15 and playing the role of c is 9 
<coughs> and so here we go. Negative b, that's negative negative 15, is going to be 15, plus or minus the square root of 15 squared. I believe that's 2. Oops. I believe 15 squared is 225. Minus 4 times a times c, which is 9, all over 2 times a, which is 50. And so now we need to break all this stuff up. The problem is it might be a little unclear how it is that how we're going to do that. Well, the way I'm going to kind of show you isn't necessarily ideal. You could just punch into your calculator 225 minus 4 times 25 times 9, and you'd get um, something that could be factored. But in fact, I like to see this a little bit differently. If we look in the discriminant in here, 225 is 15 squared. So that's 225. It's equal to 15 squared. Well, 15 squared is equal to 3 times 5 squared, which means that this is 3 squared times 5 squared, which is happens to be um, 9 times 25. Well, if we go back in here and rewrite it that way, we'll have 15 plus or minus the square root of 225 is now 25 times 9. And then this is 4 times 25 times 9. Well, look at that. That's minus 4 times 25 times 9. What happens is we actually have um, like a GCF in here. We've got 25 times 9 minus 4 times 25 times 9. We can actually factor it out in this way. We'll get 15 plus or minus. This will be 25 times 9 times 1, which is what's left over here, minus 4 still all over 50. So what we've done is we now can see what we can pull out. 25 times 9, that's 225. Its square root is 15. So if I move this a little bit so I have some room. If I work with this guy, I can pull out 15 by jailbreaking. This will be plus or minus 15 square root. And what's left out here, if we jailbreak this guy, is 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. That's where the i root 3 is going to come in. And again, it's a little confusing. Again, most people would just use this calculator and get in here um, and then jailbreak. I like to do it this way. And then from here, all that we're left to do is simplify this guy using imaginary numbers and then um, pull out any GCFs or simplify anything we can out in front. Now, 15 plus or minus 15 over 50. All three of those pieces have a GCF of 5, so I can simplify them. If I divide each piece by 5, I'll have 3 plus or minus 3 over 10. And so we can rewrite this guy then, square root of negative 3, as i root 3, since that's exactly what it comes out to be. That'll give us our final two answers. 3 plus or minus 3, i root 3, all over 10. And so that's 1, 2. We had our third answer over here a while ago. And so to solve our problem, a very involved problem, we get that our answers are x equals negative 3 over 5, and then 3 plus or minus 3i root 3 all over 10. And that's one, two, three answers. We've satisfied the fundamental theorem of algebra, and we've proven ourselves capable of solving even a challenging um, polynomial that requires mop. <coughs> so in the course of this video, you've seen um, examples, worked out examples, um, for all three different kinds of factoring strategies typically covered in standard seven. You've seen ones that ask you to factor by grouping, just pretty easy. You've seen ones that ask you to um, factor ones that are like degree four that require a little bit extra work, but it's still mostly diamond work. And then finally, you've seen ones that involve mob that will always have I plus or minus i root three when you do the quadratic formula to get those three solutions. Um, and so as with all of these, I hope this video has been helpful. Hopefully this has made it a little bit more approachable for you. And this is Mr. Steele signing off. Have a good night.